Good morning. So our topic for today is about sugar, diabetes, and insulin resistance. The vicious cycle and how to break it. This is by yours truly, Dr. Josephine Grace Raha. Okay, so we will start with knowing why we consume sugar in the first place. Because sugar, as what we know, is the trigger of diabetes and diabetes is the start of also insulin resistance and insulin resistance is already linked to majority of the metabolic diseases that we have today so it usually starts with our need for energy so as humans we live and needed energy in order to survive it's just that the most popular and the most common source of energy nowadays is coming from sugar so it's not that it's not actually just the sugar from your drinks or the one that sweetens our food, but it's also the sugar that is inside our rice, bread, pasta, potatoes, mashed potatoes, french fries, those biscuits, those chips, those corn chips, and those grain products. So all of those are having a load of sugar that when eaten actually can now increase your blood sugar. And the moment your blood sugar in is increased, your pancreas will secrete insulin okay and the moment that your insulin is secreted uh, since we are still sensitive normally it will now lower our blood sugar by allowing the entry of those blood sugar towards the inside of the cells so it lowers our blood sugar to a normal level so we have to take note of that that is a normal sugar level okay so however uh, even if it's normal since the insulin will remain in our system for up to 18 hours we try to keep that sugar a little higher so it will induce us hunger or it will make us hungry after around just one or two or even three hours after our last intake so after that hunger is there we will again usually crave and eat more sugar so again we go to that and fill in to ensure that our blood sugar is elevated and then our insulin will secrete again and then it will be lowered again in our blood so that we become hungry again so this is a normal cycle if we are still insulin sensitive so that happens usually for the young that doesn't have type 1 diabetes and also those who are very athletic and are very insulin sensitive but what happens when we grow older that our metabolism goes goes slow or slows down and also whenever we eat a little more sugar than we are used to and we eat it more frequently than we are supposed to eat especially that the promotional ads nowadays are actually forcing us to eat more than we need so what happens is the moment you eat that sugar your blood sugar spikes however the moment your insulin is released your sensitivity is no longer there so once you are no longer sensitive you are becoming resistant so once you are already resistant or what we call as ir or insulin resistance your blood sugar will no longer lower so it will still add even to even more elevation in your blood sugar but the problem is that there's too much blood sugar in your system that cannot go inside the cells so your body is actually starving despite elevated blood sugar because they can no longer enter the cells so with this elevated blood sugar the person tends to have even more hunger sensations and then when the person is hungry and they're craving for sugar they will tend to eat more sugar and increase their their blood sugar even more but since there's already resistance so the hunger will continue to persist and this is the vicious cycle that eventually leads to diabetes okay so when there's already diabetes we know that this is a vicious cycle that goes on and on and on because of insulin and then becoming resistant and then becoming hungry and then that craving will continue until damage can be done in our organs so what happens is usually the patient manifests as always hungry always thirsty and always peeing okay so he was diagnosed again with diabetes and the doctor will usually prescribe medication so where does the medications falls in here so with diabetes diagnosed medications will be given okay so the medications will be given so it can either be in the form of of tablets or capsules 
okay? Or sometimes it can be even through injections, okay? So with injections, this low blood sugar can now be lower down, okay? So it will now be lower down. But the problem in there is there is still persistent of IR, insulin resistance. So, the person now becomes dependent with medications to lower the sugar. So, the moment the sugar is lower again, the person will feel hungry again. And the moment the sugar is, is taken, it will elevate the blood sugar. And so, since there's already IR, medication will now become part of the cycle. So, this is now a medication-dependent cycle of diabetes. So, this is what we don't want to happen, okay? So after this one, what do we need to do? So how can we break this vicious cycle, okay? So we can break this vicious cycle actually, even if, for example, you are already on the sensitive phase when you have normal blood sugar, or if you're already on the medication-dependent phase, you can actually maximize this period where you have a normal blood sugar so that you can continue to persist yet get out of this vicious cycle so what do you do of course you will still feel the hunger after that but this time you no longer need to give in to sugar but what will you use as energy good thing there is actually a better form of energy it's just that those form of energy was not made popular so this form of energy we can actually get from other sources so the most important sources that we can think of are the healthy fats and of course the good kind of proteins so when eating these kinds of foods actually your hunger will be will be addressed yet you will be able to produce more energy than you've ever had as compared to sugar but this time without the insulin effect so the insulin effect the moment that you eliminate your need for sugar eventually your insulin will become sensitive again okay and with your insulin becoming with your cells rather becoming sensitive to insulin again ir can be reversed and eventually hopefully your medications will no longer be needed in order for you to naturally lower down your blood sugar at an all-time low especially if you don't continue to consume this sugar so that is just the basic of how this vicious cycle can actually be addressed by eating not sugar loaded foods but the ones loaded with fats and proteins this is the basic for our low carbohydrate nutrition that we promote so if you like this video i hope you can subscribe to my channel or you can follow my page this is your diet doctora dr josephine grace rojo and we can discuss more of this but this is the overview of why we promote low carb nutrition as a means of management or helping those people who have diabetes address it naturally and hopefully not become medicine dependent for so long. That's it for today. I hope you will have a good day until our next video. Bye-bye.